Now, after discussing these four uh, significant concepts, uh, which was the concept of phenomenology and then there was the concept of this experimental psychology uh, and then there was this concept of mimicry wherein, you know, uh, an individual is fascinated with the images around him and finally the concept of dialectics what Jack Slaken would be doing he would combine or put all these concepts together to write the mirror stage for example from the idea of phenomenology which we discussed earlier he would take up the distinction between the self and the ego our uh, subject and the ego and uh, then he will, uh, you know, try to understand it through uh, the role of the images are the role played by the images in the formation or development of a person and then, you know, add it with the uh, experience or with the theory of dialectics in order to recognize or for recognition. Now, these are the four important concepts that are put together. Now, uh, coming to this mirror stage now, this mirror stage basically was an attempt by Jack Slaken to, uh, you know, discuss the formation of ego. Now, this ego is of a very great significance in psychoanalytic criticism or psychoanalysis theory. What is ego in layman's sense is the formation of I. You know formation of self you know, wherein you and me would recognize that yes we are a being a being who is complete in every sense of the word and who is very different from others now this formation of ego is of great significance in the life of a person but how does this uh, you know ego get formed at a very early stage of one's life that is in the mirror stage or you know when one is around six months of old or 18 months old. Now remember when we deal with the classical uh, theory or classical psychoanalytic theory or traditional psychoanalysis theory ego will not be formed at the age of six months as I told you earlier that uh, how did the traditional psychologist believe that a person recognized himself as a complete person was as he grew older and became wise only then this ego will come into existence but Lakin goes beyond uh, those uh, you know years of maturity or years of wisdom and you know starts right at the very beginning when a child is of six months old. So Jack Slaken would tell you in the mirror stage that the mirror stage begins from the age of six months and continues up to 18 months and it is in this time period that ego will be formed in the imaginary stage of a person, in the imaginary stage of a person. Remember at the beginning of this lecture, I told you that uh, Jack Slaken would be talking about three different phases of our life, imaginary, symbolic, and the real. In, in the mirror stage, the symbolic and the uh, real is not important because here most of the focus is at the very first phase or stage of human life which is imaginary and it is in this phase that Lakin would be looking at the formation of ego, at the formation of I. Now how does he do this? Now again, uh, in this case, what becomes important is the concept of mirroring, is the role of images. As we discussed earlier, that uh, through the concept of Henry Wellen, he, uh, J J Jack Slaken told us or, you know, brought the concept that a person is, uh, finds, you know, completeness in the images of the other people. For example, you know, he sees the image of mother and thinks that, you know, uh, his self lies in the image of the mother. 
and then he you know completed it with the help of Callios who believed he, who wrote about mimicry wherein he said that why do we get fascinated with the images around us he told us that it was a psychological fascination a psychological bent that uh, animals have and that human beings have when they do not know much about themselves they get fascinated uh, with the things that are around them images that are around them and they try to link themselves with those images and it is at this particular point of time that the child would see himself in the reflections of the others or see his reflection in others or you know understand his existence through the images that are there that exist there now in doing so dialectics become very important now remember as a child of six months of age or 18 months of age has got absolutely no control over his own body has got no mastery over his own body but he you know believes or he has this you know idea or feeling or fascination that uh, he is what his mother looks like he is what his brother looks like because he himself does not know how does he look so he tries to find a complete sense a complete being not in himself but the images that appear in front of him now in doing so what Lakin tells us that this child has to believe that the other self which he has been seeing in the form of mother is actually his true self now what he has to do here the child he has to gain mastery over it at least mastery over this thought over which thought? Over the thought that his self is the self that appears in front of him, the image of his mother. Or say for example, if a child is put in front of a mirror, he sees an image in the mirror, the reflection in the mirror. Now when he recognizes that reflection in the mirror, he thinks, you know, he, he is fascinated with the movement of that guy, that, that reflection in the mirror uh, and he enjoys, he gains pleasure with that. And you know, he controls the movements of the reflection in the mirror. That is an important aspect of this mirror stage. For example, this child moves his hand and the hands in the mirror also move. So this makes the child realize that he is controlling that particular figure in the mirror. And similarly, he believes that all the images that are in front of him in, that, in the phase of imagery are actually under his control. And he, he has a control over them. And he thinks that he is like those images. He in fact is those images is what a child thinks or is what Jack Slaken tells us. But then he tells us that this whole process of you know uh, mirroring this whole this whole process of mirror stage this whole process of you know finding ourselves outside our our own self are finding ourselves outside uh, you know away from our true being is contradictory in its nature and how is it contradictory in its nature obviously it's not a great idea to understand a child has no control over his own body so he finds an autonomous body out of his own existence so there is a, a contradiction which grows at the very early stage and it is here that this ego is formed but how is this ego formed now this ego is formed on the base of misrecognition now how is as I told you earlier, what basically ego is? Ego is uh, the identity of a person. I mean, ego means I, myself. I am conscious about my existence. I am conscious about my being. Now, when I recognize myself, when I recognize my uh, existence, when I recognize my uh, being, it is then that ego is formed, I is formed. But in the child's life, when this I is formed, when this ego is formed, it's based on the idea of misrecognition. He thinks that I am the mother. He thinks I am the image that is in front of me. Now whose image is in front of this child? The image of 
his or her mother and when he sees himself or herself in the image of mother and thinks that this is me now this is the formation of ego and this formation of ego as i told you earlier is based on the fascination of the child in the imaginary in, in the imaginary phase in the imaginary state you know to be or you know to mold himself as per his environment and this fascination of you know uh, uh, developing an ego or developing a recognition developing an identity in contrast to the other images that are around goes down throughout the lifetime once this child comes out of you know this stage of uh, this stage of imaginary and enters into the symbolic order even in the symbolic order now in symbolic order a child is grown up when he starts speaking which is the language when he learns language he enters into the symbolic stage now in symbolic stage he is out of this mirror stage now he won't be mirroring you know his existence he won't be forming his ego by looking at the images around him but Th that ego even in the symbolic order would be dependent on the other on the other images as i told you earlier the idea of dialectics you know dialectics about is about recognition and desire when we were dealing with alexander coe's concept of recognition and desire he bought that con that concept from hegel which i discussed earlier and hegel told you that this whole uh, identity of this universe is based on the thesis antithesis and synthesis now this thesis and antithesis would be my existence is in contrast to the existence of my brother my brother exists my other human uh, human uh, you know other other human beings exist in our society and when i see them my identity is recognized by those people now as they recognize my identity i become an ego i become i i become a, a being i become an existence but when a child is not in this symbolic order or symbolic phase where he would understand or make his identity in contrast to the other other people around him how he manages to make that identity again in contrast but that is a reverse order now he sees the image of the mother and thinks that this is me and that me whom he thinks is complete whole has got full control over his body is in contrast to his own real self over which he has got no control so that is the mirror stage wherein the ego is formed our i is formed our self conscious is formed a self is formed at the stage of imaginary where a child has got no control over his own self has got no control over his body has got no control over his movement but still in his mind in his consciousness in his psychology he forms an image of himself by mirroring are are through the reflections are through images that he sees around them unless and until he grows and enters into the symbolic order but one thing remains constant throughout and that is the concept of recognition how does our ego sustain how does our identity sustain and lekan would tell you through the philosophy of hegel's dialectics that our existence our ego our being remains there only through the process of dialectics through the process of a a contrasting image a contrasting figure that we have i exist because there is another being who exist in this world and my existence is is because of his accept tense if he would reject my identity if he would not recognize me who i am then my identity my ego would get hurt or for that matter perhaps even my very own identity would be at loss so that was the concept of mirror stage mirror stage is about the formation of ego at the very earliest stage of 
human life where a person has got no control over his own body neither has he entered into the symbolic order where he can speak or talk or say anything it is in this particular order where a child sees himself in the reflections either of his own self in the mirror or through the images that exist in front of him as i told you earlier for a child all the family members that come in front of him are merely images and he loves those images he loves to play with those images you sit in front of a child and he would play with your ear he would play with your nose he would play with your you know chin he would play with your finger he will play with your hand he would get fascinated by slightest movements by strange movements that you would make in front of him he would start smiling by by you know by the weird acts that you perform form in front of a child now that is the fascination and when you do such things lekan would tell you that child does not believe that these things are done by someone else but he sees himself in those particular images he sees himself in those in those particular uh, reflections and believes that this is his existence so his ego is formed outside himself which is conflictual in nature which is in conflict with his own existence why is it in conf is in conflict simply because it is an illusion it is an illusion isn't it because he sees he thinks that his mother is himself obviously he is not his self is different but this is how lekan tells you that a child relates himself to and this illusion helps him to form ego at the very earliest and this conflict does not end here this conflict would you know uh, continue throughout the life in hegel's term because you know uh, there is both rivalry and dependence in the human life when i gave you the example of the hegel's theory of master and slave now there is a rivalry between master and slave isn't it but uh, there is a conflict in their relationship there is a rivalry in their relationship but then there is also dependence in their relationship they are dependent on each other they are rivals they are in conflict with, with each other they are you know in war at war with each other but simultaneously they have to respect each other because it is the existence of both of them that makes their individual existence possible as i told you earlier a master is a master if slave recognizes him as a master if slave refuses to recognize a person as a master he will cease to be a master similarly our existence at large depends on our recognition by our fellow human beings if our fellow human beings refuse to recognize us as the human beings we would cease to be human beings psychologically we may not cease to be human beings uh, in form in structure in shape but psychologically there would be dent you keep you know calling a person with animalistic names say for example there are people who would call a man dog monkey donkey uh, anything you know if you start you know calling him with such names repeatedly repeatedly there comes a time where he becomes offends you he takes offense to it because he believes that you should not recognize or identify him as an animal animal but you should identify as in him as a human being that gives him a lot of confidence in his ego and then he would come up and say this this is me i a human being and then you can call him with any name whatever his name is so that is the formation of ego the the mirror stage tells us that the ego is formed from the age of 6 up to the 18 in the imaginary and this is illusion this is illusion this is not real and this is conflictual and it depends on the images it depends on the reflection of a child and he forms his ego outside his own self he gains mastery over the images he gains mastery over the he thinks that he gains mastery over the images he gains mastery over the reflections and believes that these images and these reflections are but 
no other than his true being which basically is false but that is how the ego is formed at the level of at the phase of imaging so that was about mirror stage i discussed it in a great detail just i you know took to the backdrop of this concept that how this concept basically evolved it's a very short an easy kind of a concept the formation of ego when a child realizes that his he has an independent existence autonomous exist, existence and he believes that his autonomous or individual existence lies outside himself in the form of images that are in front of him is all about the mirror stage but then it was important to understand how this concept developed and that is why i discussed phenomenology i discussed the psychology i discussed ethology i discussed uh, the dialectics because these were four important concepts that concepts that came into the formation of the mirror stage which eventually developed what we have in the contemporary times the mirror stage and that is all we have in this particular lecture i hope that this lecture was helpful for you and you were able to understand the mirror stage now uh, that is all we have at your academy for today uh, you can continue watching jack's lakens lectures and you can click on this end screen it would take you to the playlist of jack's laken where you can continue to watch the lectures on the symbolic and the real and other important concepts of jack's laken thank you for watching and keep watching your academy don't forget to share like and subscribe your academy and also comment at the videos on your academy.